Humphreys from the Essendon Footy Club. Welcome to my home and I'll come and take you for a tour. Now yeah, this is my spare room. In this room I've got a little bit of memorabilia. Got my uh, first game jumper. Here's my tailor-made sticks and uh, like all good professionals they've got their name on the bag so I've recently got that done. This is my uh, second spare room. I've converted it into a poker room and uh, as you can see the IOU sheet and there's no surprise that uh, Carl Reed was those the boys the most money. Come out the back and I'll show you the rest of the house. Yeah, this is my living room and kitchen. Got the TV on the wall and a sleeping bag on the couch for those cold winter's nights and the heat of airing. If I have a little bit of a practice putt and practice my short game, we'll see how this goes. So I'll lift out. Come uh, out the back and I'll show you the backyard. Yeah, this is my uh, backyard. Please excuse the dirty jocks. As you can see, you've got a barbecue. Enjoy having the boys over and uh, cooking up the feed. Really enjoy coming out here and uh, sitting out here and enjoying nature and having a bit of a stretch after the game. I also have a bit of a rinse out here from time to time, but it's getting a bit cold and the spa's nice and warm, so I think it's time for you guys to head off and I might go and do it. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for having me. It would have been nice to have a win. We'll talk about the game in just a moment, but uh, that's more like a theme park there, than a house. It's an extraordinary setup. Yeah, no, I just uh, enjoy my backyard and enjoy entertaining, so uh, yeah, got a bit of a spa and a shower out there and a barbecue. To last night we go. 47 points down at three quarter time, nine goals to two in the final term. You get to four uh, points at one stage, then another goal, 10 points. I still. There's 10 minutes, uh, sorry, 10 points of difference, five and a half minutes to play. At that stage, are you thinking Bombers are going to win? Yeah, I guess we had a bit of a run on, we had some momentum and um, like you said, there was plenty of time on the clock and we were within range, so um, I guess, yeah, it was disappointing to fall that little bit short, but um, I guess it was pretty, a pretty good effort to get that close in the end. We're just going to show the Courtney Dempsey final moments again. Talk us through where you were and how you were feeling at this point. Yeah, I was on the other side of the ground actually and... Um, yeah, I think uh, Debs had the right idea there to play on and to uh, try to get a little bit of extra distance. It was just a shame the siren went. How much, um, I guess I was at the game and just behind the uh, the interchange bench and you can see the runners. It was a really long quarter, I think it was about 35 minutes. Uh, were you aware of the time remaining? Yeah, the runner came out, I reckon, with about a minute to go and said there's a minute left, boys. So we sort of knew that, uh, that it was going to be pretty tight and the ball was sort of in our forward half, so it was uh, went right down to the wire. Well, you've got the journey... Yeah. Um, I think he, he practices barrels every now and again, so I reckon he might have needed to get onto one of them to, to make it, but I, I would have backed him in. Let's go to the game. The Bombers hugely inaccurate. One goal, 15, which was an extraordinary stat in itself. 78 inside 50s, the most ever without a side winning the game. And then a final quarter to save a nine goals, one to the Bombers, two straight to the Swans. A finish, Jude, filled with high drama. In the end, the Swans by four points. New boys are on top of the table. Yes, this is certainly a game that we wanted to come down to Melbourne and make a statement. Uh, it was just uh, it was one of those things that you just want to take the crowd out of out of the stadium pretty early against us, and we were lucky enough to get our pressure up. Here's Rich Shorty in goal. Um, we managed to kick five goals to one in the first quarter, and then just kick them to uh, two goals, 15 by three quarter time. So when Kieran Jack kicked that one, I think we kicked eight, eight straight at that stage. Here's Dan Hanbury. Uh, he got subbed off. He was pretty filthy with getting the red vest, which which everyone is. Um, Love and Murray bursts through here and kicks a, kicks a really good goal. This is when the momentum started to change. Uh, it's just one of those wave of things when uh, it, you feel pretty helpless. Uh, the crowd's involved, there's 45, 46,000 there cheering along. Um, Ryder Rider and Bell Chambers are hitting it down their throat. Uh, they're coming and we just felt helpless at that stage. What was the message of three quarter time from John Longmire to? Um, it was just probably kept to basics. We, we were out off the, on our feet really and uh, really just not, not, not moving and, and they were up and running and uh, certainly Jed has been fantastic for us, his, uh, his ability. And then it came down to this last moment where um, we were screaming that, that he's played on. So. Uh, it was just one of those moments that, you know, obviously we'll, we'll cherish because we go into the bye, not not having to uh, just analyse in depth. Very different fortnight, uh, winning by four points and losing. Tell us three things you took out of last night. Uh, three things we learnt uh, from last night. Momentum is hard to stop. It was huge, uh, huge that Eddie had last night. Uh, we avoided making history. 47 points at three-quarter time. If we'd squandered that lead, uh, it would have been an AFL, BFL record. Uh, and Essendon are a top four side, I think, with their rough combination, the strength of their midfield. Their midfield. Uh, and also, the, you know, they're missing uh, Zara Rikers as well, so they're a real good quality side. Gus, uh, what did James Hurd say at three-quarter time? We've got some vision, I think, of James Hurd at three-quarter time, but he was very strong, wasn't he? Yeah, Hurd, he was, um, he was pretty positive. He said, you know, boys, we're not playing that badly. Uh, I think we were up in you know our key stats that we like to to play well in, and he just said keep working and it'll turn, and it, it eventually did. 
What about right here? I'm not at liberty. He says, one game, one game. Is that what he was saying? What was that in reference to? Yeah, I think he I was just saying, you know, we've got one more quarter left and you get, you know, a week off, so just give it everything you've got. Tell me about the numbers you refer to. He was happy with all the numbers. Inaccuracy, obviously not. But yeah, obviously, um, you know, we were. In, I think we had a huge amount of inside 50s and we won the contested ball, so they're two sort of things that we look at. So you mentioned Lewis Jeter, who is one of the most exciting young talents in the game. He had 21 kicks yesterday, one handball. You had four kicks, 24 handles. <laughs> yes, that would. Yeah, I didn't realise how, uh, like, you know, obviously here we want the ball in his hands and uh, I'm happy to give it out to him. I obviously don't want to have to come away with uh, just four kicks, but uh, it's good to give the guy, guys uh, the footy like this. Gary Rowan or Jetta quicker? I reckon, to be honest, uh, Gary Rowan might be might have him for toe, which is, uh, you know, it's sad not to have him, have him out there. We looked up and about to Gary Rowan just before he broke his leg, came out of the square against North Melbourne, but... What's really impressed me with Lewis Jetter is just his composure. Now, every time he gets the ball, it's almost, I mean, he's moving super fast, but he's got that real glide about him now. He doesn't look panicked. He kicks the ball exceptionally well. And, I mean, he'd be in the old Australian side so far, too. It's amazing confidence. I mean, like last year it took him 19 points before he kicked his first goal, and now he's got his confidence up. He kicks them all the time at training, and, you know, he's, he's up and about. Have you tried to chase him, Angus? No, I don't <laughs> think I would last too long behind him. So. <laughs> Good idea. The player with confidence right now is Joe Watson. He's turned into just a wonderful leader of the football club, Gus, but he's playing exceptional football. Yeah, James, uh, you know, he's always very consistent in his game and he's just so good around the clearances and I think, um, you know, at the, at the minute he'd probably nearly be leading the ground line. You just saw some rough work there from Bell Chambers and Paddy Ryder. That was just hand-delivered stuff. There is, as a combination, they're right up there with Matt and Louis and Cox, mm -hmm. I guess. And in terms of palming, maybe better. Yeah, Tommy and... Um, Paddy get their hand, you know, first to the ball a lot of the time and, and feed it to our midfielders, which, um, you know, Judd's on the end of a lot of them. Tell me, I read during the week that you had had a chat with Leroy Jetter about his diving. You used to be a Matthew Mitchum, you're not anymore. <laughs> and Brett Stanton had a little bit of a moment. Is it uh, true you had a chat during the week and I understand uh, James Hurd also talked to the boys? Uh, I, I had a brief chat with Leroy, probably, you know, wouldn't have been too long at all and I'm not sure, you know, how that got out. But, um, yeah, just sort of... Just worry about playing the footy, and it's something that I've, um, you know, looked at and, and tried to get out of my game. How do you how do you deliver that sort of feedback? Because it's probably something as a player you don't necessarily want to confront. So how would you have delivered that to Leroy? No, I just sort of said, you know, you've been playing really good footy, and that um, to just to just play footy and not worry about that sort of stuff, and the free kicks will come. Probably fair to say none of the bombers are great actors, and that's been historical. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got some vision of Tim Watson from Home and Away, who just sort of emphasises the point that players should probably stick to football. What's your name, mate? Sam. Sam, who do you play for? I play with my uncle Donald on Summer Bay. He said to say hello. Did he now? Well, make sure you say hi from me. Hey, it's your pen. No, keep it for your schoolwork. Thanks. All right, then. I'll see you around, mate. OK. <laughs> hey, Sam, who's your favourite footballer? Warwick Kappa. <laughs> <laughs> Not too bad from Tim Watson. That was circa sort of early 90s, I think, maybe late 80s. Uh, Mick Moldegas, he's going to tell us who's hot, who's not this season.